one. All right, JMC 6000 here, and in the garage today I have the 2023 Jeep Compass Altitude. This is the Altitude package. Um, with new for 2023 is not necessarily the package or the interior, even though that was changed last year, but it's what's underneath the hood. In fact, it's an all new powertrain. Well, let me just show you. There it is. The all new two liter Turbo produces 200 horsepower, 221 pound-feet of torque. Um, the engine is actually fed through an eight-speed automatic, brand new for the Compass. In fact, they've never had this engine before in the Jeep Compass, or uh, I, I don't. I think this engine is closer related to the two-liter that you find in the 4xe's and the Wranglers and the Grand Cherokees, and also what was optional in the Wrangler. Um, here a couple years ago, uh, maybe still as well. But anyway, the turbo, what's kind of unique about this engine is, as you can see, it looks very massive in this compass uh, underneath the hood here. As you can see, the turbo is right directly, right smack dab up front here. Um, you can see that it grabs fresh air from right here, brings it in through the air box, comes around through a silencer tube, then it goes through the turbo, which is right here, and then the charge air, goes out and goes back down to where the intake is. I believe the intake on this, um, if I remember correctly, actually has its own air to water intercooler. A lot of Jeep products are going to air to water intercooler, uh, just like what you find on the new Hurricane inline six that's found on the uh, Ragoneer that will soon be on other um, Stellantis FCA products. What's kind of funny is on one of the coil packs, it still says FCA instead of Stellantis, but anyway, we're going to test out this engine right here in the new Jeep Compass. In fact, why don't I get done talking and meet me in the car? All right, we're back in the car here in the 2023 Jeep Compass. And what I want to talk about in this video is, I mean, we all know the Compass. It's been around for a while. In fact, the Compass has been around in the Jeep portfolio since about 2007, if I remember correctly, 2008. Um, and then it got a refresh in 2011 uh, where it adopted the baby Grand Cherokee design. Um, and in fact, it continues on with that baby Grand Cherokee design in the current model that I'm driving right now, which I absolutely love. Don't worry about that. Anyway, so what I wanted to talk about in this video is the recent powertrain upgrade. Not many people are talking about this, but I believe it's, it's merited for a video because it's so significant. I mean, yes, the, the horsepower only jumped up to about 20 or so horsepower torque, uh, roughly about 30, if not, I'm sorry, roughly about 30. Torque actually jumped up quite a bit, around 40 pound-feet of torque, if I remember correctly. But what's significant is the engine and the transmission so desperately need an upgrade. And what I mean by that is the old 2.4 Tiger Shark with the 9-speed ZF uh, supplied automatic was absolutely horrible. I don't know if I can stress that enough. Absolutely the worst engine and transmission combination that I've ever come across in a modern day vehicle. I mean, it was bad. I mean, it took like, I don't know, two to three seconds between each shift. Uh, the the 2.4 sounded harsh and weird and nasty and and it just had no, it had no power down low or anywhere in the rev range at all. Some people actually like the engine. I, I was not a big fan of it, as you can tell. But what's significant is the fact that this thing here is now running the updated 2.0 with the eight-speed automatic. Never, uh, Chrysler's ever ran an eight-speed before. I believe the transmission is a Stellantis design transmission. Uh, in fact, as we read on the window sticker, the transmission and the engine are both supplied in the U.S., so that's pretty significant. The vehicle is actually made in Mexico. Um, nothing against Mexican-made vehicles. They actually stepped up a quality. In fact, one that I want to touch upon on quality in this vehicle is actually the refresh that I got last year is very nice. I mean, as my daughter pans out and looks at, I mean, the, the dash is a nice soft-touch material. We got genuine stitching 
on this dash here. It's nice and padded. Um, the door panels are nice and padded. You got genuine stitching on the, the, the door panels itself. And here on the armrest, it's nice and padded. Over on the doors, everything else, the steering wheel is a nice padded, uh, kind of a matte finish leather wrap steering wheel. I mean, it's it's really a nice place to be here in the Compass. But what I wanted to focus on on this review is, has Jeep really done enough to really make the Compass relevant? And, and what I mean by that is, if you didn't know, Jeep is actually canceling the Cherokee after this year. In fact, uh, I think it's in the summer that they're totally stopping production of the regular Cherokee which carries the old powertrain, which carries the old 2.4, uh, carries the old uh, yeah, 3.2, the mini Pentastar V6, and the nine-speed automatic. What I want to find out, and we're about ready to jump onto the on-ramp to get onto the highway here, is really to figure out how well does this thing uh, go? You know, how well does it accelerate? And that's what we're going to find out right now. So as I jump on the highway here, i got a small little HRV in front of me. I'm gonna kind of hang back a little bit and we're gonna punch it, all right? You ready? A little bit of a delay. So sorry for the interruption. Had a pause in a moment of our video interruption here, but we're gonna go back. Right now I'm about, uh, speed limit here is about 70. Uh, I wanna do 75. Right now I'm doing about 68. So let's go ahead and punch it again to see how it is. Here we go. All right, got up to 85 there, but we're gonna slow down. Anyway, the mid-range that this engine has is really, really good. It's nice and meaty, has a good meaty mid-range. I'm impressed with that. Um, it seems like it does pretty well. And uh, I have no complaints about this vehicle, none at all. Uh, let's go ahead and hit some highs and lows especially pertaining to the new powertrain about the 2023 Jeep Compass. So three highs and we got three lows. Here we go. Number one, uh, high number one would have to be the powertrain. It's a dramatic improvement over the 2.4 and the 9 speed. I can't stress it enough how much Jeep needed this 2 liter. So high number one is the dramatic improvement of the powertrain. High number two has to be this interior. I mean, the interior of this new compass is absolutely, I mean, for for $36,000, $37,000, what this MSRP is at for this thing, you get four-wheel, you know, all-wheel drive, but uh, you get all-wheel drive, you get this nice powertrain, and you get this beautiful interior. I mean, really, I'm quite impressed, especially this altitude package. You got like a leather and cloth kind of an insert of the seat here, which is really nice. Uh, leather, real stitching on the dash. I don't know if it's leather, but real stitching on the dash. Um, some nice soft touch materials. It's really a great place to be. Some great stitching, contrasting stitching on the steering wheel, and even a good gauge cluster. Uh, and then high number three uh, for this Jeep Compass has to be the looks. I, I tell you what, I've always been a fan of the Compass, especially when they adapted that baby Grand Cherokee look. And I think it just carries on here. The packaging is great. The practicality is awesome. And it just looks amazing. I, I think they look really good. Really, really good. And it carries the previous Grand Cherokee looks versus the new one that's out currently. So, <coughs> again, a couple highs. Now, let's go into a couple lows for this Grand Cherokee. Uh, number one low would have to be the safety tech. It's pretty generic, pretty plain. Um, you have to get the upper trims to get adaptive crews. And this altitude trim, I don't have adaptive crews. And the lane centering is, is okay. It, it, you can change the sensitivity and whatnot, which is nice. But really, I, I would appreciate some more safety tech. It does have uh, forward collision warning and forward brake assist. Uh, but it's not a full, you know, uh, stopping you. Anyway. So the safety tech is kind of a low. Number two low, um, as much as I like this new infotainment screen, I, I don't appreciate how it just jets out out of the dash and it's very fingerprint happy. And what I mean by that is, I don't know if you can pick it up on camera, but there's fingerprints all over 
and I just picked up this car as a as a test vehicle and it just it just it's a fingerprint magnet almost like this piano black down here not a big fan you got piano black over here not a big fan and also with this infotainment is I have to go into the touch screen maybe oh it's not even working now there finally it worked I have to go into the touch screen in order to get my heated seat and my heated steering wheel there's no hard button for that I mean with these blank buttons I would appreciate maybe a heated steering wheel button or a heated seat button down here just some hard buttons would be nice to access that you connect five is great but the, the fingerprints and having to go into the menu just to get a hold of the heated seat and the heated steering wheel I think is a little excessive I would like a hard button for those things um, or at least give some dedicatedness down here to the climate control with you know very easily access to, to heated seats and heated steering wheel anyway that's uh, a gripe number two and then finally my low point for uh, number three on my list um, would have to be uh and I'm really, I mean, this is a great vehicle. It would have to be the price. Yes, I know. The price, I mean, it's it's okay, but the compass is starting to get up there in price with a lot of vehicles. But I mean, what's to stop me from getting a RAV4 for the same amount or maybe getting a, a Ford Escape or even the Bronco Sport, which would be a direct competitor to this for roughly the same amount. And now, I will say the powertrain in this is better than the standard Bronco Sport powertrain, which would be the 1.5 liter three cylinder. But this doesn't hold a candle to the two liter EcoBoost. Or, or even the hybrid powertrains offered, even in the Escape or in the, um, uh, as far as um, the RAV4. Just to name a few quick competitors. But anyway, those are my highs and lows um, right now. Even with some full throttle stops, I'm averaging right about 26 miles to the gallon up here on the highway. You know, roughly the current miles per gallon is right around about 30, maybe a little bit under. Um, is usually what has been kind of been bouncing back and forth with the instant. But uh, it's, I, I have to say, Jeep has really done themselves. And with the cancellation of the Cherokee, this is going to have to fill the spot that the Cherokee is leaving out. The compass is going to have to, and that's why I believe Jeep did what they did. Jeep knew they were going to have to cancel the Cherokee. So now the compass is going to have to fill that spot. And I believe they have a strong contender for that to happen. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. This has been my quick review, powertrain review, everything uh, regarding the 2023 Jeep Compass Altitude. Stay tuned for more information uh, as far as um, more videos that are to come. Man, I'm waiting for the adaptive cruise control kick in and it's not kicking in because I don't have it. Anyway, stay tuned for more videos to come. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification. I upload every single Wednesday morning and I got more car reviews that are coming. Awesome. You guys be blessed. Have a wonderful day.